we are working with Excel 2016. I have set up the data in here and we're going to be doing formulas to save time. It's all in here. We will do some basic formatting, go through formulas. The gross pay here. This is the Daily Planet. They work 31 hours and a half. Clark, he made 15 and a quarter. We're going to determine the pay. You know that you would multiply the number of hours times the rate. You're working with cell addresses B2 star C2. To begin the formula function, we press the equal sign on the keyboard. We click in the number of hours. We multiply. Click in here. Complete the formula. You could do the checkbox or control enter. will keep you in the cell. We get Oh, go into the corner. There is a black dot there, a little dot. Put your mouse on it, double click on it. I will zoom this up larger so you can see. I want to make it look like currency. These cells are highlighted. The first cell is always clear when you highlight, unlike Word, where the first word in the sentence is <clears throat> highlighted. So it looks like money. Federal tax. But we do that. You see how you're always multiplying by the row here? Here, you're dealing with the row, the row, the row. When we're doing the federal tax, we're going to be multiplying D2 for Clark times the 20% down here. D2 times B9. B9 needs to be consistent. You always drags down. So I click inside here, multiply, click inside the point 2. I want it to be locked in so that the cell never changes. Rather than typing dollar before the B and a dollar sign before the 9, I hit the F4 key. It is now consistent. I pull it down. You can see here we're still multiplying by B9, but we're working with the relativity of that row there. We're going to determine the state tax. Same way. Equal gross pay times our state 3% tax. Hit the F4 key. If it's a MAC, command T. And you could do all these formulas in here and just drag them down when you're done. Saves time. Equal. We want to know the Social Security tax. Gross pay times 0 0.0765. Press the F4 key. I hit the tab, it brings me over to the cell to the right. As you get more skilled with this, you will use the shortcuts a lot more. And it's always good if you're in the beginning of stages of Excel to double check with the calculator. The net pay is relative in this row here. Equal this minus the gross, I'm sorry, equal, I should have said, gross pay minus federal tax minus state tax minus 3675 we do not need to hit the minus at the end we have it done highlight these cells I can double click on the dot it brings us within that range very cool and what's even nicer is that if we find out let's say <clears throat> though it's got a raise to 22 and a half an hour I go in here see how all the numbers change or let's say that the state tax went up to 0 0.035 you will see this in column F and H change so you're working with those references there. Next thing here. We need to put a last name on the check. You need a column between A and B. I click on the B above number of hours. Again, the first cell is clear. Right click, new. Insert, new column. So I type in last. Kent Lane Lang Olson. Now let's say you want to add another row. We put somebody on the payroll. We left out Perry White, the editor. 
I click inside the four here, that will put a row above four. And I type in Perry White's name. He worked 37 and a half hours. He makes 42.50. I just type in the value. You don't have to type all those extra zeros here. I need to put the formulas in here. Rather than recalculating them or redoing them, I highlight these cells here. Black crosshair. Pull it down one row. Sometimes it will automatically fill it in. You're seeing railroad tracks here. It means it's too narrow. I click on the line between the E and the F, between the I and the J. If I want to auto fit, I double click on that vertical line. Next thing I want to do, when we added this column, it used to be in B10. You look over here, um, it's now in C10 because we added a column here. But I want to move this back. I highlight these three cells. You could cut and paste, get the dagger, pull it over. We go over here. It's back in B10. I want to format these numbers here, make them look like percent. It's going to round. Just watch this. I'm on the Home tab. I click on the percent. And the only one that actually is correct is the top one for federal tax. Click once a second time. That way it shows the actual value. Excel calculates on the actual value, not the rounded value. Next thing I want to do, I want to know how much we spent on our expenses here for gross to deed. So to do that, very easy. You don't want to add up all these numbers. You click on this auto sum. Click on it again. It's a sum of E2 through E6. Pull it to the right. I could type totals here. I want to make this row bold. I click on the 7 here. To the left there, it highlights the entire row. I make it bold. Control B. Top row, let's say, I, and you see the railroad tracks again? I highlight these three columns, double click on any vertical line in that range, everything shows up. I want to bold face and center what is in the top row, bold, center. I want to put daily planet payroll at the top and with a blank row underneath. I highlight one and two. <clears throat> right click, insert. And I type in daily planet payroll. Control enter keeps me in the cell. I make it bold. I make it 16. What I want to do now, I want the text centered above here. Rather than trying to figure out where to click and where to type and hit the space bar, this is super easy. This has been going on for years, okay? You highlight the range above there. With the white cross, I click on Merge and Center. Let's say I want to color text here. I can click here and make it, let's say, green. We got the green there. I can make this green. And let's say I want to shade this. I'm doing some real core basics here. Uh, next to the paint bucket, the drop down arrow, and I want a very light yellow. I've got that information there. I could highlight this. This is cool. You don't have to keep hitting the drop down. Just click on the green, the yellow. Next thing you can do, you can alphabetize. You want an alphabetical order. You can see it's a little out of sequence. You click on any last name. You're on the Home tab. Click on Sort and Filter. Say Sort A to Z. It's done. You've got that all done, and if um, Lois took a day off last week or an afternoon, change it to 17 and a half. Look how the number's going across, and at the bottom, will change. So we've got the first part of this done. In the next lesson, 
we will do some more formatting and talk about headers, footers, and printing.